वेलकम इन द क्लास ऑफ मोलिकुलर डायग्नोस्टिक इन दिस क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट द क्लिनिकल डायग्नोस्टिक एंड देयर प्रोसेस इन दिस क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन टू क्लिनिकल डायग्नोस्टिक क्लिनिकल डायग्नोस्टिक प्रोसेस क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री एंड इंटरव्यू फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन एंड द डायग्नोस्टिक इन्वेस्टिगेशन एज वेल एज डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्टिंग द कंडीशन दैट अफेक्ट द लेबोरेटरी investigation will be also investigated in this lecture now we will learn about the diagnostic investigation so there are three phase in the process of diagnostic investigation the pre analytical phase the analytical phase and the post analytical phase the pre analytical phase comprises the time and all process for the preparation of a patient for a diagnostic investigation to the moment when the investigation is made and the analytical phase comprises the time and all process of diagnostic investigation so the post analytical phase comprises the time and all process for the reporting the result of the diagnostic investigation to the person who then undertake the medical engagement medical management of the patient so the error made during each phase influence the clinical relevance of the diagnostic report and the precaution must be taken to avoid the result that are misleading or provide false information so the analytical phase is under the control of the diagnostic service which has the responsibility for accurately performing the investigation so in contrast during the pre analytical and post analytical phase other personnel including the medical doctor and paramedical personnel who are not working with the diagnostic service are also involved in this process and the error made in this two diagnostic phase the influence the result such that they may no longer the clinically relevant so the diagnostic report are valuable only when the information can be used for patient management so it is therefore an obligation for the diagnostic service to provide the result to the clinician in timely manner so that the result can be interpreted together with the clinical finding of the patient so if the finding do not fit the patient clinical picture the clinician should discuss the problem with the laboratory or diagnostic imaging staff to find a reasonable explanation so the sometime it may be useful for an experienced clinician to visit the diagnostic service to confirm the diagnosis of the disease himself so it has been proven that the communication between the clinicians and the diagnostic service of a hospital is most effective if daily consultation are held to discuss the patient clinical problem and observation made now we will discuss the diagnostic testing so over the past 100 year diagnostic testing has become a critical feature of a standard medical practice so this model include nine step the test selection ordering sample collection patient identification sample transportation sample preparation sample analysis result reporting result interpretation and clinical action so the pathology is usually separated into two discipline that is laboratory medicine and anatomic pathology the laboratory medicine also referred to as the clinical pathology that focus on the testing of fluid specimen such as blood or urine of the patient for the diagnosis of any disorder the anatomical pathology address the microscopic examination of the tissue cell or other solid specimen so we will investigate the laboratory medicine and anatomic pathology in detail in the next this slide the laboratory medicine is a medical sub specialty concerned with the examination of a specific analyte in the body fluid for example cholesterol in the serum protein in urine or glucose in csm cerebrospinal fluid the specific identification of microorganism example disease causing bacteria in the sputum a human immunodeficiency virus in the blood or parasite in the stool so the analysis of the bone marrow specimen for example the identification of a specific type of leukemia and the management of the transfusion therapy for example cross matching blood products or blood typing so the 
टोमिक पैथोलॉजी इज अ मेडिकल सब स्पेशलिटी कंसर्न विद द टेस्टिंग ऑफ टिश्यू स्पेसिमेंट और बॉडी फ्लूड टिपिकली बाय द स्पेशलिस्ट रेफर टू एज एनाटोमिक पैथोलॉजिस्ट टू इंटरप्रेट रिजल्ट एंड डायग्नोसिस डिजीज और हेल्थ कंडीशन द एनाटोमिक पैथोलॉजी इज कंडक्टेड आफ्टर टेकिंग ए बायोप्सी सो द सम एनाटोमिक पैथोलॉजिस्ट परफॉर्म पोस्ट मार्टम एग्जामिनेशन ऑटोप्सी and typically anatomic pathologist do not interact directly with the patient with the notable exception of the performance of the fine needle inspiration of the biopsy so the laboratory scientist historically referred to as a medical technologist may contribute to this process by preparing and collecting sample and performing the test so especially for the laboratory medicine the ordering of diagnostic test and the interpretation of result are usually performed by the patient testing or patient treating clinicians although pathologist have much to offer in this area now another field apart from the pathology the medical imaging is also known as radiology is a medical specialty that use imaging technology such as x ray ultrasound computer tomography magnetic resonance imaging and positron emission tomography to diagnose the disease and health condition so a new sub specialty in radiology is molecular imaging which involve the use of functional mri technique as well as mri pet ct or pet mri with the molecular imaging probes so several new molecular imaging probe have recently been approved for the clinical use and a growing number are entering into the clinical trials so the growing interest is taking individual variability into account when defining disease tailoring treatment and improving the prevention so this initiative hinges on recent advances in molecular and cellular biology which has provided insight into the mechanism of disease at the molecular level so these advances have contributed to the development of molecular diagnostic testing which analyze a patient biomarker in the genome or the proteome so co-currently the role of pathology has expanded from the morphologic observation into the comprehensive analysis using combined histological immunohistochemical or molecular evaluations now we will uh, Uh, focus on the molecular diagnostic so the use of molecular diagnostic is a rapidly developing area and the molecular diagnostic tests are being developed and used to diagnose and monitor disease assess risk inform whether a particular therapy is likely to be effective in a specific patient and predict a patient response to the therapy the molecular diagnostic testing can identify a variety of specific genetic alteration relevant to the diagnosis and the treatment the molecular diagnostic technique are also used to detect the genetic material of organism causing infections so panel of the biomarker are being developed into the molecular diagnostic test that is also called omics based test that include genomics and as well as the proteomics that are used to assess risk and inform inform treatment decisions such as onco type dx and mama print in the breast cancer so the potential advantage of the molecular diagnostic include it providing provide the earlier and more accurate diagnostic method it offer information about disease that would better tailor treatment to the patient it also reduce the occurrence of the side effect from the unnecessary treatment and it also provide the better tool for the monitoring of the patient for the treatment success or disease reoccurrence the molecular diagnostic also help to improve the patient outcome and the quality of life. so now we will uh, discuss briefly uh, the condition that affect the laboratory investigation the physiological or behavioral condition of the patient may influence the laboratory measurement it include genetic and ethnic disposition means geographical distribution or ge uh, geographical uh, area of the patient is also have a great impact on the laboratory measurement system the age means 
some are older some in uh, fetal the, the age also have a great concern on the biomarker level uh, for the laboratory measurements the nutrition level in some are taking some nutrition that can interact with your drug or interact with your body system or that can also elevate some biomarker in your blood so the geographical factor is also can affect the laboratory measurement the biorhythmic fluctuation means your circadian rhythm can also influence the laboratory measurement the sex means male and female has a different type of the marker or different level of the marker that can also in, uh, influence the laboratory measurement the pregnancy condition for example in the gestational period the gestational diabetes can occur that is not present in a normal pregnancy so it can also influence the laboratory measurement the physical exercise also have a great impact on the laboratory measurement so the use of the drug and traditional medicine if you are taking ashwagandha before concern to your healthcare provider then it also will interfere with your laboratory measurement so do not take any traditional medicine before approval to your clinicians so uh, now i am closing this session and uh, in this lecture we have discussed and you should um, aware of what is the clinical diagnostic what is the clinical diagnostic process and which process is involved for uh, when a patient encounter with the disease and when they enter into the diagnostic process the clinical history and interview importance for the clinical diagnostic process the physical examination the diagnostic investigation the diagnostic testing means anatomical or pathological testing or radiological testing we have gone through the condition that affect the laboratory investigation is also briefly discussed with you so thank you thank you all for the attending this session so these are the some references uh, by which you can uh, learn more about the molecular diagnostic and just go through with this references and learn more about the molecular diagnostic so in next class we will discuss about the clinical diagnostic of diseases so thank you thank you for listening